Despite storm surge warnings and evacuation orders issued days before landfall, 117 deaths and over $62 billion in damages have been attributed to Hurricane Sandy. When it made landfall in the tri-state area, the then downgraded superstorm shook the very foundation of coastal communities and the people living and working in them. It was like a war had come through overnight. Why didn't people leave? Why was there such a failure to communicate risk to residents? What can we do better to prevent such a catastrophe? Since the storm, the NOAA Sea Grant Network has been actively engaged in the recovery effort and through social science efforts like the $1.8 million Coastal Storm Awareness Program has helped to improve public understanding and awareness of natural hazards and associated risks. This is an issue that uh, people in the greater New York metropolitan area have had to deal with for a long time. Sandy has brought it to the forefront Findings are featured in a new short documentary produced by the Connecticut, New York, and New Jersey Sea Grant programs. Addressed in these findings is how to strengthen storm warning messaging and make local authorities seem more engaged during these times. Emergency briefings issued by National Weather Service can be a very effective tool for motivating residents to take action during coastal flood events. Emergency managers and local officials start paying close attention to these warnings six to seven days out from an approaching storm and residents four to five days out. If we're going to have messages coming from traditional authority figures, it might be important for them to talk about the actions that they're taking, such as evacuating their own families or going door to door, more than just repeating over and over again that there's a mandatory evacuation. Using voluntary uh, as a descriptor of an evacuation is uh, results in very low levels of evacuation attention. And we found out that uh, having a mandatory evacuation order is the simplest way and the most effective way of communicating risk. It's crucial to translate warnings for those who speak languages other than English. Uh, we persuaded and helped and worked with the city council to thereby enact legislation around language access. Also of importance is how future warnings can be enhanced for all who receive them. Most individuals see that the risk of high impact storm events is increasing. They see the consequences as dire. However, they still express a strong commitment to staying in that community. A lot of people feel individually responsible for preparing for those risks. However, they don't have a great idea of how to prepare for long-term risks. In 2013, New York City revised its hurricane evacuation zones and initiated a Know Your Zone campaign to help familiarize residents with these changes with maps like the one shown. Sometimes they put collars on a stop sign that say this is uh, you're in a storage storm zone or this is how high the water could go. I think we need to continue to reinforce those visual representations of how far inland the water can go and how high it can get. Even if residents have all the necessary information to make an evacuation decision, they may be hesitant to do so if they are elderly, disabled, or have pets. These storms will not go away. They are likely to increase and become perhaps even more severe on average uh, with global warming. 